book that struck a nerve with so many parents. It's called Raising Resilience. We're joined by mom and content creator Stephanie Foblas, who says she worries that she's passing fears down to her daughter. Stephanie, uh, you, we have an Instagram post from you. Uh, we were talking about being a single mom and doubts that you have, and you mm -hmm. revealed it to the world, which is so powerful to share our fears with others. But you wrote in it, I can't help but wonder if she feels a lack. Does she resent me? Uh, will she, I know, do with my own mom? Do I give her enough space to talk about family dynamics and her feelings around it? Am I validating her enough? And you go on to talk about this fear of being a single mom. By the way, my mom was a 19-year-old single mom, so mm. it works out, trust me. We can do uh, it. Yeah. You can do it. Um, but you're worried about passing on these fears. Yes, so, you know, I, I didn't, ex it was a little, I treated that post as a little bit of a journal entry. Mm -hmm. I really didn't expect it to resonate with so many mothers, um, but that is something I fear. I mean, no one tells you just how much repair having a child is. It's a mirror. It's a big. Yeah. It's a yeah. big mirror, and um, and that mirror does not go away. It is there. <laughs> yeah. It is there every day, all day. And so, um, you know, when I was writing that, that's exactly what I was doing. I was looking in the mirror. I was looking at my child, and I just wanted to know. You know. I, what type of cause is the you factor? Mm -hmm. What is the you factor? Yeah, so in my book, I call it the you factor. Mm -hmm. This is what you bring to being a parent. You're human, you've got a background, you've got a past, and you bring a full you if you're real and you are, mm -hmm. clearly. Thank you. Yeah, and that's, it's important that you, the first step is, am I aware mm -hmm. of who I am and what I'm bringing to this? Right. So, Tova, how do you keep these fears for not, you know, I did a, a, a thing with USA Swim years ago, and they said there was this big thing about black children not swimming. And, and they said, actually, that is not the case. It was, the major factor was if you can't do something, you're less likely to put your child in harm's exactly. way. Mm -hmm. So a number of parents yeah. were unable to swim. And so they said, I'm not going to put my child in a pool that I can't right. save my child if it goes wrong. Oh, right, so right. your fears of life, Absolutely. keep you from, you know, my son took the bus. Everybody, granny, my mom, everybody calls like, you sure about this? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it's the yeah. bus. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but my mom clipping. has a fear mm -hmm. of New York. Right. And so you put these right. fears on kids that we all Always. have. How do we deal with that? You know, it's one of the most important pieces of being a parent is what are my fears? What are my anxieties? Can I be aware of them and say, I have to separate them from my child, this just like me. you're doing. Mm -hmm. I, this is me. This is what happened to me or how I've gotten to this. And how do I make sure that I don't communicate that to my child? Wow. Absolutely. So um, a lot of people talk about coddling. I mean, we talked about boundaries and, and structure. There was an article. I called my team immediately. There was a teacher who went viral. She posted that five and six-year-olds who did not need special support were showing up in diapers. Mm -hmm. uh, the original video was taken down, but it struck a nerve. Yeah. Because I read that um, 20 years ago, the average age was 18 months for potty training. Mm -hmm. We moved to 22 because people felt like that was a little early than 24 months, but now five and six year olds. Yeah. What's your reaction to that? So, you know, I was surprised. Without judgment, of course. Yeah, I won't judge. <laughs> I don't like to judge. Yeah. Um, I was surprised by that too. And I think parents have to get a little grace because we were in a pandemic. Yeah. Those mm -hmm. children were babies in a pandemic, right? So grace to those parents. But children need parents to help them move on. Mm -hmm. They need us to say, you might not like this, I'm gonna help you use the mm -hmm. potty. Mm -hmm. Because probably most children don't say, hey, sure, get me out of a diaper. Right. I mean, there are some who do. But it really takes a parent to say, I got this. Right. You've got this. When you're trying to raise a resilient child and they say, I don't want to do something. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go day. do this. I don't want to do, you say, oh, but you have to. Is, is that is that a verbiage yeah. that you use? Yeah. Oh, look at Stephanie. She's like, oh. <laughs> Whether they're <laughs> kindergarten or college, do you implement that what in a child's life? What the hardest don't. thing about being a parent is saying no to your child. Yeah. Why? Because they get mad at us. Yeah. And so we don't take it personally. We say, I got this. You say to them, you don't have to like this, honey but it is dinner time. Oh. We eat at the table. Right. And you know what? They get used to it and they go, oh, you're in charge. Okay, and they feel safer. They want us to be in charge. They want us to be in Not charge. Harsh. Not harsh. Not harsh, way. but in charge. Yeah. Stephanie, thank you for that post. Tova, thank, thank you. you. They're staying with us. We're gonna meet a mom who says her permissive parenting style backfired. And we'll have more of your questions. 
with Tova's answers. And later, the Surgeon General joins the conversation. The pressure of being a parent, it has affected so many that he believes we're in crisis after the break. Raise a resilient child. We're best with back with best-selling author Dr. Tova Klein, Stephanie, a mom who, like many, grapple with the question of Am I doing this right? And we're also joined by Kate Hindman, a mom of a six and three-year-old booked and busy, who realized <laughs> that her and her husband's parenting style was not working for their children. Kate, thank you for joining us as well. Um, before we get to the permissive parenting mm -hmm. part of this, I do want to point out in the book you have these five pillars, Tova, of raising a resilient child. You say provide emotional safety so a child can build inner trust, help a child learn how to emotionally regulate. That's like mm -hmm. dealing with your feelings, being able to say I'm frustrated or whatever you're dealing with. Uh, developing agency. I feel this one is the hardest for parents to give. Yeah. Developing agency. What is, why is that so hard? Because developing agency is allowing a child to move out gradually into the world, mm -hmm. take steps on their own, take risks, which yeah. we don't like yeah. as parents and gain some independence because we want them to become independent people and yet if you're afraid you pull them back. Mm -hmm. So what though is the difference and Kate is here between giving them agency which is a lot of choice and being permissive? Yeah. yeah. What's the difference? It's the difference is choice could be for let's say a young child as simple as you want the red shirt or the blue shirt. Right. It's not open your drawers and have 15 <laughs> options and each one they throw out and you say okay you don't want that you say Ah, we got two to choose from today. So it's limiting, but giving them that sense of, I, mm -hmm. I made this choice. Kate, what was happening in your home with permissive parenting? So I had originally set out to be a gentle parent, not a permissive parent. What's the difference? The difference is discipline and boundaries okay. and still being in charge of your children and, and exuding that confidence that they can then know I'm being taken care mm -hmm. of. Um, gentle parenting is a great concept. It's a great idea, right? We all want to be gentle parents. Yeah. We don't want to go back to the ways of like spanking and all right. of those things. Um, permissive parenting is something that I did completely on accident mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. I've been counter correcting very hard um, and my kids have actually- How did you accidentally well. do it? <laughs> I, I I would say that I took things a little too literally, um, like not saying no, redirect. So it was getting to the point that I was never saying no and I was avoiding all conflict. Um, and by avoiding all conflict, we yeah. avoided the opportunity to become resilient um, as a family and, and as it's it, interesting, because I know you posted on TikTok about it. So you were in a situation where you said, I'm not going to say no. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, wait, was it, did you ignore the behavior? I would actually just say yes a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. I was always kind of, building our schedule or our lives around what, what was best for the kids. Give me an example of something you would say yes to earlier. So the, the first time it really hit me was we'd had these lollipops. We were going on a trip so for the, for the airplane to have lollipops. And my son had found them in the kitchen in the morning one morning and he wanted one for breakfast. And I thought, hmm, why say no? You know, life's so short. Well, that's me. Okay, I'm a permissive parent. <laughs> I think it's okay. I don't. Th I don't think that that. But but to me, it had been a lot leading up to that, and uh -huh. then and also seeing in my son his dysregulation. My parenting was dysregulating him and our entire family. Um, without the boundaries, without my confidence as his parent, with just saying yes to everything, he was starting to just push every single boundary right. because mm -hmm. they weren't there. Mm -hmm. I get that. That's interesting because you talk about you and your husband. Take me, because someone in the audience had a, a question about the village. They used to say it takes mm -hmm. a village. Mm -hmm. um, you talked about your journey as a single mom. How do we get the whole village on board for resilience? <laughs> because you've decided no lollipop. Grandma or aunt or uncle might say, here's a lollipop, and now the village <laughs> is not all on the same resilient page. How do you get the village on the same page? Well, first of all, it does take a village. Right. And you need a village to raise a child yeah. anytime. Right? You can't do this alone. But... You don't need everybody to be on the same page, but you need the main squeeze mm -hmm. to be the one, or if there's two main squeezes, to be the ones who say, it just can't happen that way right now. Okay. You might want the lollipop, but we're gonna have it later. And you have to be able to take the backlash. Children are allowed to be mad. Mm -hmm. They're allowed to protest. They're allowed mm -hmm. to say, mommy, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. Daddy, well, you're Well, mine told me he was frustrated yeah. the other day. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because you probably to told him he couldn't do Because something. he heard Elmo say it. I was like, you better go live on Sesame Street. <laughs> <Yeah. Garden." laughs> no, I, I, I embraced that because yeah. he said, I'm so yeah. frustrated. 
and it was jarring, but I, I received it. And yeah. I said, I understand you're frustrated, but dot, 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 dot. Yeah, yeah, you're accepting that's how he feels right now. Right. That says, I got you. I see you, I got you, and we can't do that right now. Right, so I All see you, I hear you, but I am still parenting mm -hmm. on yes. this. Yes. I love it. That's we, safety. That yeah, is right. safe that's to safety. say, I hear you, we're still not going to do it, <laughs> and I still love you. Yeah. But I know what's best. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> oh, exactly. I mean, this could go on and on, but yeah. thank you so much, Chova. Yeah. The book yeah. is called yeah. Raising Resilience. It is red hot right now. I'm telling you, when you go pick your kid up for school, just have this in your house, in your hand, because guess what? I know you guys will. You're all going home with a car.